Welcome to this brief video exploring evaluation of your learning, teaching and training. That was me training with two 32 kilo Russian kettlebells in the snow on Blackheath Common and I can tell you my evaluation was exhausted. No matter what type of learning you're trying to share with others, hopefully you're aiming to achieve your best in the delivery and presentation of this and therefore this will show in their understanding of the learning. There are five key questions to ask about evaluation and I've actually covered these in a brief video to follow this one. Intended learning outcomes are normally built up of an overarching aim for the whole learning initiative followed then by objectives which can be measured through your evaluation. Objectives normally begin with to followed by a verb, for example to understand, to explore, to examine, to critique. And these might be knowledge based or related to knowledge, attitudes, skills and habits. A good rule to follow is try to set one achievable objective for each of the key sessions that you're delivering through education or training and make sure that they are achievable and measurable. If you're conducting evaluation at the end of a day, it's always good to remind your audience what you set as an overarching aim and the achievable objectives, so that when they're filling in the forms, they can actually relate to those. So you may print your ILOs on the back of the evaluation form or show it on screen. The aim focuses on the learning initiative you're sharing. So, for example, you might say something like, the aim of this learning is to enable the participants to clearly understand whatever it is you're talking about. Whereas the objectives are slightly different because they focus on achieving the outcomes. So maybe you even want to write them by saying, by the end of this day, you will be able to, and then list the things that they should be able to do. So either they will achieve this or they won't. And a neat way of doing this is putting one objective for each session that you're delivering. So, for example, on a training day, if you split that up into four key sessions, have one objective addressing the outcome of each of those sessions. Here's a good example of an objective. So if a day was training on HIV awareness, then one of the outcomes might be an understanding of the modes of transmission of HIV. So you teach them those modes and therefore hopefully they will understand those and your evaluation therefore tries to explore how well they understand them. And there are different ways of writing forms, of course. Here I've just given you uh, some ideas that so that the participants might tick not at all, could be better, okay, well or really well done. Try to be positive in how you write these things so it's an aspiration for you to constantly achieve better in the services you provide. An evaluation of learning is meant to measure something, so um, try your best to make sure that your form is written in such a way that it not only gives you feedback on how well you've done, but also suggestions on what you and the learners can do to take that learning forward. That's called feedback and feed forward. After the event, you may need to write up a report, especially for managers or employers. And some of the things that you can do then with your form, if you've written it in different ways, asking for um, numerical tick boxes, for example, and giving space for comments, then obviously you can incorporate both of these into your report. And as you analyse the feedback that you've been given in evaluation, obviously that may lead you to making further suggestions how such training events may be taken forward for the future. And it's really great to end your evaluation forms with a little personal thank you. Um, thank the participants for filling in the forms. You might have given them the opportunity to put on their contact details or their names. Sometimes people tend to leave these off. Um, but there are arguments for and against both of those things. And even sign it with your name and give your contact details. That's really good, just in case participants want to follow up things with you, um, or maybe even invite you back and do more training in the future. Hope this helps.